welcome to the Wood County Court of Common Pleas, and this is courtroom number one. My name is Matt Rieger, and I'm one of three Common Pleas judges here in Wood County. The other two judges are Judge Molly Mack and Judge Alan Mayberry. I've been a judge since uh, 2017. I was elected to the position in 2016. Prior to that, I was a Bowling Green City prosecutor for 20 years, with a little bit of a hiatus where I went overseas to the Republic of Georgia to live. Now I want to I want to invite you to the courthouse. Typically, um, we have invited sixth graders from all over Wood County to come and visit the courthouse. And already in this school year, we had 500 kids visit, and I was looking forward to the month of May where we were going to have both the Bowling Green Middle School and the Perrysburg uh, Middle School sixth graders come and visit uh, the Wood County Courthouse. But unfortunately, because of coronavirus, we can't have you here and you can't gather here at the courthouse. So I've created this virtual tour of the courthouse for your benefit. We're gonna start here in my courtroom. And that's not really my courtroom, it's everyone's courtroom in uh, Wood County. And it's been everybody's courtroom since 1896. The building that you see, the building that you will see here and the building that is uh, that you may have seen from the exterior was originally started in 1894. The cornerstone was laid on July 4th, 1894, when over 5,000 people gathered in Wood Bowling Green to see the uh, laying of the cornerstone and also a time capsule was placed in it with uh, a lot of information from that time period. The courthouse was ultimately opened on September 29th, 1896. And since that day, there has been continuous operations of a court uh, facility. This courtroom that is right here that I'm standing in has been used as a courtroom since 1896. In the back part of the courtroom, it used to have a uh, second story where there was seating. Um, what, one of the things I always ask students when they come here, I ask them what was on television in 1896. And after a few minutes, most people figure out there was nothing on television in 1896. But what interests people? What do people watch today? Law and Order. Uh, a lot of shows about uh, courtroom drama. And that's what people came to see back in 1896 and even through the 20th century. And that's something I always like to emphasize too. This courthouse has existed in three separate centuries. It was built in the 19th, it continued operations in the 20th, and even into the 21st century it continues today. That second story, which was a, a second story seating, was removed in 1920, and a wall was placed up, and then above that, at the top of that wall was a American flag that was painted there. That American flag stood there from about 1920 until 1980, and it was ultimately painted over because it had gotten worn and also uh, was cracky. When I became judge, um, an anonymous donor provided the money to uh, paint a new flag up there. Now we wanted it to be consistent with the old flag and so the flag that we painted has only 48 stars, the same number of stars that existed when the courthouse flag was painted in 1920. You'll see at the front of my courtroom, uh, up above, is a uh, mural that stands to justice. There are two people uh, on the mural on either side. On one side is a person who's holding a, what looks like a feather, and in the other hand, holding a sword. There are two ways to interpret this, and actually it has two different meanings. One is something that maybe you've heard before. The pen is mightier than the sword. And what that means is, is that words sometimes have more lasting impact than any sword has ever had. And I'll give you an example of that, the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence, uh, signed in July 4th of 1776, continues today as a symbol of freedom for people all over the world, not just in the United States. It's impacted more countries and more people than many documents uh, have and it's affected more people than any sword has during that time, same time period. And think of that. Think of how many wars have existed, how many different things have happened during that time period, and all of it uh, had no, had, did not have as much impact as the written word of the Declaration of Independence. The other thing it can mean is that um, that quill, that pen, that feather writes the laws and the sword protects the laws. On the other side is Lady Justice. And you'll see Lady Justice is blindfolded. 
I always ask students, why is she blindfolded? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that I always say it this way. If I had two students at each one of my tables here arguing a case, and one was in a uh, Bowling Green shirt, and another one was in a Perrysburg shirt, if I said, well, I'm not going to listen to the Bowling Green person because he's got that Bowling Green shirt on, and I'm only going to listen to the Perrysburg one, that's not fair. Justice is blind to who people are. It doesn't look at their color, their race, um, their sex, or any other orientation. It only looks at the facts of the case. And when they uh, listen to those facts, they use that balance that's also being held by Lady Justice to balance those, to weigh the evidence. And then you'll see that she has a scroll in front of her. And that scroll contains the law. She uses the law to balance the evidence that is provided to her, and she doesn't look at who people are. It is uh, the ideal that we try to follow as judges in the courthouse here. And we have continued to try to follow that since the founding uh, of our country and since the building of this courthouse. There's also a picture in my uh, jury assembly room of the first jury that heard a case here. That was in December of 1896. It was a murder trial. It was an individual named Jesse Beaverson who was the night watchman in uh, North Baltimore. He had caught uh, three individuals who were trying to break into a safe at the post office. They took off and uh, Jesse's trusty dog ran after them and tried to uh, catch them. But his dog was killed and then shortly thereafter the uh, defendants shot Jesse. They were brought to trial and ultimately convicted of the murder but not the burglary that they were charged with. So since that jury trial in December of 1896, we've had over 20 United States presidents, two world wars, four other war conflicts, and we've been through many different kinds of international and national crises, even today's coronavirus. But through that time period, almost 125 years, the jury trial has still existed and still continues today. A tradition that's almost 900 years old of jury trials within the United States and England. And so I want you to remember that, that this is a tradition here in the courthouse. And one of the things I want to emphasize, I know that probably you have said that you don't like history or maybe you find history boring. But remember what history is. History is everything that we live every day. Right now, you are living through historic moments that 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, people are gonna to continue to ask you about. What were you doing during the coronavirus? What did your family do? How did you deal with that? Remember those type things are part of history. History is your life, it's everyone's life, and it's about lives. And this courtroom is about lives and people who have lived their lives and had their lives decided here in this courtroom. Well, welcome to the third floor of the Wood County Courthouse. This is a beautiful barrel uh, ceiling that uh, really is amazing to see and to is a, is a highlight of every visit here when the students come up here and they see how amazing and how high the ceiling is here. And one of the things we like to point out, and which is the centerpiece of this third floor, are the two murals. There's the mural behind me, which is a memorial to the oil well industry that existed in Wood County from approximately 1880 until 1910. During that period of time, almost 25% of all of the oil produced in the United States came from Wood County. It is a, a testament to the beauty of, well, to the industrial, growth of Wood County. One of the things to see on the outside of the courthouse is a mural and it has Lady Justice. She has her arm nicely on uh, farming, but then she has a hand against industry, uh, symbolizing the fact that industry is always trying to kind of move in to try and take what belongs to the farming also. And it's always kind of a competing interest of commerce versus farming interests. This mural demonstrates that uh, the oil industry at that time, which created a lot of money and a lot of opportunity for all of the communities around here, in particular Bowling Green. One of the things that came out of that was the natural gas that pushed that up. 
They didn't know what to do with it exactly, and so what they did was they um, started giving it away, and glass companies came here and started producing glass using the natural gas that came up and was pushing that oil out of the ground. Mural was created by I.M. Taylor, who at the time was mayor of Bowling Green, and this is his testament or his tribute to Wood County. So far I've talked to you about a lot of history that's significant to Wood County, but the mural behind me is significant to the history of the United States. In 1812, the United States engaged in a war with Great Britain. This was a war that had been fueling for a long time and had been since the Revolutionary War where Great Britain was never really satisfied with the loss that they had had at that point. The war was fought on two fronts, on the eastern uh, coast, where as you know, they came into Washington DC and burned it down. But on the frontier out here, and that's what that was called at that time, there were, the British were trying to come into the interior of the United States. And they continued to try at, uh, at different parts of the Maumee River. And a important battle was the battle at uh, Fort Meigs. In May of uh, 1813, General William Henry Harrison, leading troops here, engaged in a battle with the British to hold them back. And that was really what he actually did, was hold them back. Uh, with the help of Elysier D. Wood, he built uh, Fort Meigs. Now, Elysier D. Wood, maybe that name is familiar to you. That's the person who Wood County is named after. General William Henry Harrison had a history before he even came to uh, the Fort Meigs Fort. In 1811, he had engaged in a famous battle with the forces assembled by Tecumseh. Tecumseh had spent 10 years in forming a confederacy to try and invade the United States. And that was thwarted by General William Henry Harrison in 1811 at the Battle of Tippecanoe. In 1813, William Henry Harrison met Tecumseh again when he joined forces with the British to fight the Americans. The important part of the Battle of uh, Fort Max is that the, in building the fort, there were two what we call traverses or mounds of dirt. They're 950 feet long and they were built within 24 hours. Those traverses provided protection for the American forces, which were being bombarded by the British for five days. After the five days, the British came over to the fort, knocked on the door, asked the Americans to uh, surrender, and the Americans said, we shouldn't. We have no reason to. We have no casualties. The British were stymied by it and ultimately had to move on. They moved on up to uh, Monroe, Michigan, and then from there they moved over to Ontario. And finally, at the Battle of Toms uh, in October of 1813, the British Army was defeated, and Tecumseh was also killed in that uh, famous battle. And that is the important part of uh, Fort Meigs, Wood County, in American history. If the British had been able to get through, they would have won the War of 1812. And most likely, this would not be the United States of America. It would be a much different place than what it is today. If you had been able to actually visit the courthouse, you would have come and seen all of the things up here on the third floor. And one of those things on the third floor are these historical displays that were put up just two years ago through the uh, generous donation of an anonymous donor. And one of the things that's on here is a picture of General William Henry Harrison. I've told you that he was the general in charge at the Battle of Fort Meigs, but you probably know that he later went on to other fame, and in 1840 he ran for President of the United States. He was elected, and in March of 1841, he delivered a two and a half hour inaugural speech in the rain. A month later, he died of pneumonia. Now, many people attributed that death partly to him being irresponsible and giving a long speech in the rain, but also to what they thought was a curse that had been put on him. Supposedly, because of uh, Harrison's long history of fighting, in India, fighting Indians, a, a chief in one of the tribes had put a curse on him. This became popular over years because, as I said, he was elected in 1840. 20 years after that, in 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected President of the United States and he died in office. 20 years after that, in 1880, James Garfield was elected President, he died in office. 20 years after that, William McKinley was elected President, he died in office. 20 years after that, in 1920, Harding was elected president. He died in office. 20 years after that, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected president. He died in office. 20 years after that, in 1960, John F. Kennedy 
was elected president and he died in office. And 20 years after that, in 1980, Ronald Reagan was elected president. He didn't die in office, but he was subject to an assassination attempt, which supposedly, according to some people, ended the curse. I don't know if there is a curse, but it is an interesting part of the history that's tied with this Wood County Courthouse. This is a landmark to Wood County, and we hope that someday you can visit it in person. You're always welcome here, and thank you for taking the time.